There are a few different ways to do this question. I think for most people who are taking a PSAT, the hardest part is gonna be just understanding the language here. Most of it doesn't actually matter. In the xy plane, when the graph of the function f, where f, y equals f of x is shifted up six units, the resulting graph is defined by the function g. Okay, most of that is just saying, if we move this thing up six units, we get a new thing. That's all it's saying. So most of that is just filler for like, yeah, there's an xy plane and we graph things in it. That's it, right? So the SAT does this a lot to kind of intimidate you. But moving on to the next sentence, if the graph of y equals g of x crosses the point for b, where b is a constant, what is the value of b? Basically meaning we're looking for the, the point where x is four on this other thing. So we take what we have, the f of x, we're gonna move it up six, and then there's a point at four. Now, the least kind of like, um, I don't know, like visual way, I guess, to get this is to understand that if we're just moving it up, it, it doesn't really affect the overall shape of the graph. So what's gonna happen is we can take f of four, meaning we can find what the b is or the y is at f of x being four, right? So we can use the equation we're given, get a value, and then increase it by six because we're moving it up. So let's just do that. All we would have to do is plug in four for all of the x's. And so some of you might think, oh, this is gonna be hard. We've got a foil, there's all this multiplication. No, because once we put a number in, it's easy, right? So this is gonna be three times seven times two. Three times seven is 21, 21 times two is 42. Now that is not the answer, and this is where some people make a careless mistake, because it remember, it says that we have to move it up six, so we have to increase that by six. 42 plus six is 48, and that's the actual answer. Um, let me show you what's going on, though. There's a couple other ways to do it. Uh, one is we can take this exact graph, and we can put it on um, our, uh, our Desmos, right? So let's just do f of um, x is equal to, and we gotta make sure we have all these parentheses, so x minus one times x plus three, x plus three times x minus two, x minus two. Okay, so there you go, you get a little kind of squiggly thing. The shape doesn't matter. But if we wanted to, we could again, just use this f of x notation. Instead of saying f of x though, we can use f of four because that's what we're looking for. Where What is the, the overall value when x is four and see it gives us the 42. So we can do that. Um, another way to handle it is we could have added the six at the end. So let me clear this out. And some of you may have learned this in school already. Basically when we're shifting something up and down, you just kind of, add or subtract the number at the end. So there's no complex algebra involved really. We just go, all right, let's move this up plus six. Now we have our g of x and I could rename it that, but just, uh, this is, I don't wanna confuse you too much. So let's do this instead. If x is four, we can see where it intersects our graph is now 48 because we moved it up. But technically what I'm doing is kind of breaking the rules of the question. What I should do is I should, add the six to a g of x equation. So let me go all the way back here and I'll really show you what's going on. We can get a g of x, which, and this is the power of Desmos that I'm mostly showing off here. We can tell it to add six to the f of x without having to retype that whole thing. We just take our g of x, we say it's equal to f of x, and now plus six. And we zoom back down so you can really see it. <clears throat> the red is our g of x graph and you can see it's higher than the f of x. We can even see that it's six higher in some easy places, right? So the y-intercept for the, for the f is six, and then the y-intercept for the red, oops, why isn't it, oh, there we go, is 12. So ignore the one on the top. I can't get it, I, mean, I can't make it to go away, but you get it, right? It's 12, so six higher. So um, that's one way to do it, and then of course we can now do um, g of x, g of, or sorry, I should say g of four and then there's our 48 right there. So lots of ways to do it. Um, I, I probably would have just done what I did originally um, because I feel like I understand what's happening in my mind a little bit better than probably most of you do because again, this is my job, but like, 
yeah, eventually you kind of want to get there where you understand how a shifting up and down is very, very simple, very simple. If we are shifting left and right, that's much more complicated. I would still use Desmos uh, for that case, or I definitely use Desmos for that case. I don't want to get into it. To, I don't want to confuse you. Um, but translations do happen on the SAT. And I hope at least you, what you're taking away from this, even if you did it the more just traditional right on your scratch paper kind of way, is that Desmos can handle this stuff pretty well. So when the, the equations get more complicated, when the instructions get more complicated, Desmos can kind of do a lot of that for you. But here it is a simple enough situation. We can probably just think about it and be okay, but just know Desmos is there when you need it.